Hey guys, welcome to unboxing today. As you can see, I have a few boxes and I'm really not allowed to knock them down. I think it's, it's a gemstone. I'm gonna say it's an inorganic gemstone. Copper! Oh my gosh, all the stories I have about copper. Oh, I hope my family watches this. It's all about copper. My grandparents lived up on Lake Superior. Michigan is known for having a lot of copper. So for as long as I've been able to walk, I've been able to look for copper up near Lake Superior. And I remember the water up there, it smells like copper, just minerals or iron or ugh, it's just interesting. It's very interesting. And whenever all those gift shops up there, you always see like big things of copper. So whenever I think of copper, I think of my summers spent up in Michigan. Right? That was it, that was the story. It's a great story, Bradley. <laughs> this is Lake Superior and it's beautiful up in Michigan. And what's interesting about this area is that there's a lot of copper and I have spent many, many a summer in this lake. The water's really cold, but the copper is really cool. So point out the copper. There's no copper in this picture. Camera dude isn't having it. So we'll just put this away. A lot of you have looked at this channel and said, hey, Natalie, I wanna see more up close videos of the specimens, the stones that you use. The way that you can do that is go to the JTV Gems Instagram. We actually use the same photographs that are on the Instagram account that are on the YouTube. So check it out. Okay, so copper. I've spent a lot of time around copper. Have you ever been to Lake Superior? I have not. This is Lake Superior. I pretty much like grew up. Most every other place. It's really beautiful though. It's huge, lots of campfires, you can s'mores. Lake Superior was probably where I started falling in love with gemstones because I remember being in these tourist shops and there'd be these huge geodes. Six-year-old me could not pick up a geode. And I was always so fascinated. I remember walking along there and thinking, huh, I wonder why this geode is this color and why that geode is that color. So I can thank Lake Superior for my love of gemology. You take the first box because you brought it okay. on. Three, two, one, go. Hey, 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 I've seen a lot of this. That's really cool. I have to be really careful. Oh my gosh. I got it out so that. it doesn't get hung on everything. Yeah. Right. Is this going to break? I'm really worried about this. How did you Just set, don't pull set on it, it down here? I got an idea. This is grown copper in a lab. This was actually done, I believe, in somebody's basement. It it's was really not like pretty. a professional operation. So I know you need a battery, so copper. You've gotta have, what else? You have to have an anode and a cathode. And mm -hmm. basically you are charging the water so that electrons can move through it. You've got this particular solution and you have to measure it out and all that kind of stuff. You have a copper plate on one side and a copper plate on another, and you can actually cause it to pull copper off of one and attach it to the other. And then you get these really cool crystals. Then you get the really cool crystals. Something really neat about this piece is you can see it's like kind of blue or green. When copper meets water or air, it can kind of oxidize and you get that bluish green color, which this doesn't even look like copper. It looks- So it looks like a tree? It looks like something you'd find when you're snorkeling. Yeah, so that particular copper formation is called arborescent, which basically means it arbor, looks like a tree. It looks like a tree. And so what you're seeing- I kind of like is, this one better than that one. Really? I, I think, think this, this guy's really kind of cool. neat, but it looks like a afro on a Gumby figurine. So they can break. Truthfully, I've accidentally broken a couple little pieces off of it. But what you're seeing is where the it's attached grow. is yeah. really narrow. Yeah. And so you have just this little piece that's attached and then it's making this tree. Yeah. Another form of that arborescent. And instead of being like lumpy, you get these sharp crystals all growing like through here. glitter right here. Isn't that neat? Yeah, so that's, it would have been hanging upside down like yep. that. And so basically here you're having crystals that are tiny because they're growing. Mm -hmm. And then this is where the bulk of your crystals actually grew. Cool. You ready? This one's really heavy. Three, two, one, go. Okay. I, I'm out of one actually. That was like the first time I had a good unboxing. All right, this oh, looks like a kale chip. Do you ever eat kale chips? I actually don't like kale. I love kale. You don't think it would taste like kale? You were talking about the water being funny in Michigan. I don't think you want a mouthful of it. Uh, Honestly, if your kale chips come out looking like that, you might want to reconsider making them. I probably burn my kale chips, but this just, like the way, it just looks like kale. I love I'm kale. I'm worried about you. But hey, did you know that copper actually has health benefits? Well, yes, of course. Everyone should eat copper. A Quite, little. A little bit, not a, like don't go licking this. Okay, so this looks like it's oxidized. You see the blue and greens right there. This looks like something you would find up in like, Lake Superior. Well, this is Michigan float copper. How did I know? I did know that you did love Michigan. I love Michigan. So these two pieces are from Michigan. This one is from Arizona, and this one was- Someone's basement. Lab grown. Yeah. Float copper, you find this floating on the lake. No. Okay. So <laughs> I just want to make sure. So the reason, <laughs> so the reason that it is called a float copper is because it is floating in the soil, in the rock, it is loose. I'm not gonna be doing a backstroke and I find this. 
this? No. Okay. They're also, they're dug up by glaciers. So it's a glacial float copper. So when glaciers are moving along a valley floor in the ancient past, mm -hmm. the bottoms of them were moving over the top of the ground, but they were like digging stuff up as they went. And so it's called a glacial till and they can create these big piles or deposits of rocks and different things. Well, so in Michigan, there's so much copper hanging out that you actually get these huge pieces of copper. Like the biggest one ever found was, I think a little over 28 tons. And that's over 56,000 pounds. It was bigger than a car or truck. So guys, what's really cool about this is that you can actually see, you know, that copper, that kind of round hue right there, but then you can see where there's some oxidation spots. And we talked about this on another episode about chrysocolla, how you can actually pull copper from chrysocolla and how stones that have copper in it, as you know, tend to be blue or green. That hue right there from the oxidation looks very similar to that in this one too. And something else that you can kind of notice in here, you've got some inclusion of a different mineral in there that's probably like a quartz or something like that. But the cool thing is though, and I don't know if any of the other audience noticed, but we refer to it as the Triceratops copper. Here's his eye, here's his nose. There's oh, you and I the are horn right there. And then this is the frill on the back of their head. So he's really interesting. So this is actually natural. What's interesting about kale is that, or not kale. <laughs> What's interesting about native copper, this, this is how you find, this is how you find it. It, this is more common. Native right. copper, copper just again. means that it is found in the ground. It's not been smelted. That's how it is in Straight nature. Straight copper. That is just copper. Copper is also an element. Cu in the periodic table. So these form in the spaces between the layers in shale. So that's why you get this fun little crumbly look because this is actually when you get the rock, it's like this. So it gets sandwiched all in between everything. When you have your shale sandwich here, if you have any kind of deformation, you can actually squish it all out. And it's kind of like a tube of toothpaste because copper is pretty soft. So you can squish it. If you guys have the opportunity to see any more float copper from Michigan, try to see if it has any of the striations that they can get. And that will tell you the direction that the glacier was actually moving as the copper was getting ground down into the dirt. Cool. So where that was found in Arizona is around the same areas that you find yeah. a lot of azurite malachite and chrysocolla and azurite and malachite are considered copper salts yep. because of their crystalline makeup. When copper is oxidized, when it wears, it turns maybe like a bluish green. Can you all think of something that is very <laughs> American, a, a symbol of the United States that is bluish green? Yep. <laughs> Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty in New York City. Lady Liberty, she's got that beautiful blue hue and she was actually copper. And if I'm right, she was a gift from the French government, am I right? She was. Actually, she was a gift to a different country and they rejected her and then they sent her to us if that tells you how like second best we were at that point in time. When I looked at this piece, like there's some colors right there and that's kind of what Lady Liberty looks like. Like a fuzzy copper tree? She looks like a fuzzy copper tree. Sorry, Lady Liberty. Okay, fun fact about copper. It is older than Elizabeth and I. Combined, a lot older. Fun fact, the use of copper by humans actually dates back to 10,200 BC. Way back in the Neolithic period. Wait, yeah, way back in the Neolithic period, but humans didn't really start using this for tools until about 5,500 BC. So roughly 5,000 years later, but that's still a lot longer than Elizabeth Ann and I have been on the earth combined. We aren't that old. We're yet. not that old yet. When people started using copper as a tool, they were actually melting it down. Well, they discovered that if they mixed it with a, another metal called tin, that it actually strengthened it. So that started the Bronze Age. So people were using them for things like swords, utensils, and in general, it basically started the arms race of the human race. Another cool thing about copper is it has antimicrobial properties, which to me, that's probably why I see it in some of my kitchen gadgets. Yes. I have a frying pan that's copper. Yep. That frying pan reminds me of Lake Superior every day when I use it to cook my eggs. You just go around your house all nostalgic about everything all the time, <laughs> don't no you? <laughs> the nostalgia. Whenever I wear copper jewelry, my skin, like I turn red, it makes me turn red. This is fine, I'm not turning red. Not yet? Not yet. There's copper clothing out on the market and it helps huh. reduce- Inflammation? It can help reduce inflammation. I'm 
not entirely sure there's my been lesson, studies on my it. My lesson flames. But it does help not make the clothes like all stinky and gross. So I'm gonna try to find copper workout gear. They have a, it's a, like a copper thread. That's really cool actually. Which is really neat. Because copper is ductile. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, what does ductile mean? Ductile means it's really super malleable. That's the layman's terms there. We've actually talked about copper pretty frequently on this show before, but it's in a different form. It's the copper that colors stones like azurite, malachite, chrysocolla. We haven't talked about peribotermaline, but hopefully we'll get to that at some point. Turquoise is another big one so from the you Southwest. So see green or blue, thanks see you. That, that was actually really good. Sorry, I couldn't hold that in. You, you look really proud of yourself. Thanks see you. Okay, so now everyone's gonna be tested on the periodic table of elements. I'm gonna see how many we can name. Uh, no. <laughs> Don't put me on the spot because it won't end pretty. All right, everyone, see you. Copper, you'll be tested. I have this like urge to crack it. Don't crack this. I won't. I will take away your specimen privileges. <laughs> be hard to have show. Yeah, be really hard. To, it just like it just looks like something you could like crack and like pop in your mouth. You like have this weird obsession with like eating things. Do you have pizza? No, but thanks for diagnosing me on YouTube. <laughs> so let's kind of dive into why he's shaped the way he is. Because if you can this look, this is kind of really what my hair looks like in the morning close. when I wake up. So you guys can see these really kind of long, like finger-like, branchy pieces. Pieces, and at the end, they have these nice little splits and it keeps growing. So what you're seeing is kind of like Split if you've ever seen Fibonacci spirals. That is a good analogy. It's a good analogy. But if you ever yeah. see like a Fibonacci sequence where it's like a picture of like a fern or something that's similar to that, this is also kind of how these copper crystals are growing. So you're having these bigger pieces and then it branches off from there. You have this hanging down in, basically you have a cathode and an anode hanging in a vat basically. Or you have this copper hanging in a vat, but it is super saturated with copper in solution. As you charge the solution, the copper is being pulled over towards this guy and it's crystallizing across the outside of it. And a lot of the reason that it's crystallizing on the edges is that you have not like a greater concentration, but like when crystals grow, you have a crystal growth potential factor. And so different spots are better than others. And so if you had a crystal kind of start on the edge, then all of a sudden it may trigger more growth along the edge of that piece to begin with. It's really neat how you can grow this stuff just at home. It may take a while. It's not, you know, instantaneous, but you know, over a day you'd see something. Both of these pieces here are technically crystalline. With this, you're seeing bigger, bolder crystals on the man-made piece, whereas with this guy, it's still crystalline to a certain extent, but it is more like your microcrystalline chalcedony because it's growing just like a regular mineral would, and then it got oxidized later. One of my favorite pieces, though, if you guys have the mm -hmm. Sisk gemology mm -hmm. reference, mm -hmm. I highly SGR. recommend it. I recommend it. Get it now. Enjoy it. It's really neat. In the third book, there is a picture of a piece of copper from Michigan, but it has this kind of swirled thing in the middle of it. And it's actually where they were drilling into rock looking for copper ore. And the miners struck a big copper nugget. And when it hit it, the drill heated the copper and swirled it around the drill bit. And it was so neat looking that when they actually got that piece of copper out of the ground, they went, oh, well, we'll just save this. And so we got a picture of it for the book. Cool. But I always thought that was pretty neat because it's almost like a natural yet man-made specimen. All right, Elizabeth, pick your favorite. And I'm gonna pick my favorite. I like these all for different reasons. I think I like this sheet. Okay, so I chose this piece because it reminds me of Lady Liberty and I love New York City. And also I like the coloring and how it kind of teaches you about oxidation. So take a look at the crystal structure and take a look at those colors. I love this copper sheet because it's so different. You don't find metals like this very often in nature. And so to have something that naturally was deformed and squished between layers of rock is just really interesting. And it's really cool that somebody saw the value in it to preserve it because, you know, most of the time people people might see this and go, oh, well, somebody just threw that into the dirt after they got a sheet of copper. But in fact, it's mother nature's own little sheet.
joining me. Oh, you're welcome. I always love it. And I like how you bring me more boxes. You bring me bigger boxes and you bring me more boxes. All right, everyone, like, subscribe. You don't want to miss out on what we've got coming up in future episodes. I am sure you'll learn more about gemology and we will see, see you, you later. later. Pun intended. Pun intended. Totally Get intended. it? See you like copper. <laughs> Oh,